Welcome back to the Ford 400 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series season finale. Homestead Miami Speedway, sixth consecutive year NASCAR has come here to crown a champion at the finish line of this 400 mile event. Two car, Kurt Busch on the move. There, there's the two car, Kurt being able to go by Jimmy Johnson to take away the third position. Matt Kens is still the leader. Ryan Newman, his Penske teammate in second spot. The next one to get to that 48 is going to be the 24. Watching his lap times are pretty quick, too. They're just about as quick, if not quicker, than Kurt Busch. So he's on the move also. Yeah, you can tell Jeff Ward's on it right now. He's been running the bottom of the racetrack, a pretty unusual line for the most part. But Jimmy Johnson chasing Kurt Busch right now. Notice he's a little more conservative. Take a look at the 31, guys. He bumped the wall early, and now the right front tires went down on him. There it goes. He's just got to watch the entry of Pitt Road now. We watched David Reagan spin out there last night in the Bush Series race. It's very four narrow pit road. You never want to have this kind of trouble, but it's, if you're going to have it, this is the time. Have it early where you can make all this time back up. And Burton's done a good job getting his car on pit road. If he goes a little faster, he's going to blow the right Whoa. front fender off Tony with the Stewart. tire coming apart. Tony Stewart saw that wheel. Jamie Little. And Jeff Burton in his pit box. Of course, guys, you saw him get a little high. He said it's his right front went down. They had a little bit of fender damage. So Jeff Burton came in, said it's definitely the right front, guys. Fix it. Pull that fender out. You see him doing it there on the left-hand side. Very costly for Jeff Burton, guys. Well, Jamie, you could tell that was going to be a problem early on because when he got in the wall, we saw a lot of smoke off that right front tire, and it kept going. And I was very nervous that this thing might go down, and it finally did. But now... He's just got to make the ground up. He's going to have a lot of ground to make up. He's losing his second lap right here as these leaders go by. So what he's got to do now is try to get this car back out there and get him in position to get that lucky dog because right now he's the only car that's down a lap. Yeah, he's got an opportunity to get that done right now. Andy, as you said, he's the only one down a lap. So if the caution flies, he's back in the game. And he needs a caution very quickly. Now, how about the 20 car? We talked about how good the 24 car is. Both these cars sailing now. The 20, Tony Stewart started back in 14th position. He and uh, Jeff Gordon both running laps uh, extremely well. 33 15s, 33 10s, and that is quicker than Ken's at the leader. We can tell right away that Stoney, Tony Stewart had a good car, man. He went right to the top of the track. A lot of momentum up there. He's working the bottom. He's working the top. And he's won here before. He knows how to get around this place. He's won here before, but I don't know he's never won on this configuration. That's the only thing he's got to figure out is how to work this banking now. I guess what I meant, I think he's yeah. won the championship here, though, in this particular <laughs> configuration on this track. So, yeah, it's uh, he knows he's mile and a half. He's probably loving it out there right now. Yeah, he won the very first two events they ran here back in 1999 and 2000 when it was four and six degrees of banking. Now it's a progressive 18 to 20 degrees. The one car, Martin Truex, there in a battle with our in-race reporter, Carl Leverage, as these guys battle for seventh spot. Jerry, when he unloaded here on Friday afternoon for the very first practice session, he told us, he said, this is the best car I've had all year long. This thing feels good. It's fast. And right now, we just got to see if it's going to stay that way because he has not yet been able to practice this car at night yet. Dave? And guys, right now, as we're getting a report, uh, maybe there's something going on with the 24. The one car had a scare yesterday in final practice. He had just told his crew chief, Photo Mannion, that the top line was running great for him. And on the final lap of final practice, he scraped the wall right in there somewhere between turns one and two. They repaired the whole right side of that car and got it back together. But uh, Bono said, we think we'll have a pretty good race car, but that was close. And take a look at the two car per Kurt Busch and the 12 car Ryan Newman, the teammates. They're actually running down Matt Kenseth just a little bit right now. And these guys want to end the year on a high note. Kurt Busch has already won this year. But Newman, he's on a dry spell. Kurt Busch won here from the pole in 2002. Remember, he came here in 2004 as the pole sitter went on to win a championship by a scant eight points over Jimmy Johnson. So he's had pretty good success here. Trying to get up a win here at the end of the year. And the guy behind him, we told you about how Ryan Newman's now had an 80 race dry spell. How much does he want to win for uh, for not only for himself, but for this Penske operation? Well, he knows he's got one shot to go in that situation. He's got to get it done today if it's going to happen this year, that's for sure. The Ford of Matt Kenza showing the way here in the early laps. Uh, a couple of dodges behind him, Kurt Busch and Ryan Newman. And then three Chevrolets, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, and Tony Stewart with uh, Martin Truex closing in a hurry. 24 laps are complete. Back with more from Homestead in a moment.
This broadcast is available in Spanish by activating your SAP button presented by ESPN Deportes. Early laps, Homestead Miami Speedway. Matt Kenseth, the leader. Kurt Busch in second spot. There is a 17 car Kenseth. Four consecutive top five finishes here in the chase. Uh, if it wasn't for Jimmy Johnson, he probably would have won two or three of those races. Kenseth trying to end the season on a, a win here at Homestead Miami. A couple of guys behind him, Kurt Busch and Newman, the two Penske teammates. How about the one car, Martin Truex Jr.? This is the car he set on the pole with at Texas a couple of weeks ago. Led so many laps in Atlanta, finished second at Michigan twice. And this car should have won four races if I had any luck at all. And he is driving the wheels off of it early on here at uh, Homestead Miami. Jerry, this car is so fast right now, it's almost stupid. He's like three-tenths of a second faster than anybody out there. He's dead on the top of the racetrack. And Andy, watch him here go past Johnson. I mean, this thing is just flying right now. He's got that groove, that upper groove working better than anybody. He's way, way up there. And he's, it's very risky up there, but it's super fast right now. I mean, he's got 236 laps to go, and he's on the wall every single lap. I mean, to me, it doesn't give you any room for error. And he's already hit the wall in practice. They had to down there this morning. We just heard him talking about it. The whole right side was beat up. They had to re-decal it, fix all the fenders. And uh, I, I, my, I'm going to predict that he's going to hit it again before the day's over, as close as he's running to that wall. How big would this be, though, for DEI? Everyone's talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. leaving after this race and going away to Hendrick Motorsports. But in terms of momentum internally for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, the, the organization, if they can get a win here with Truex or even the eight car. It, it will be huge for these guys to win, especially if the one car was to win because he's going to be the leader. He's going to take over the leadership role of that team. And for him to go out of here with a win would be huge. Although this car right here, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he needs a win bad. Started all the way at the back of the pack. They had a transmission change and they had to go to the rear of the field. He has now clicked off, what, 21 positions. Earnhardt Jr. all the way up to 20th spot. Dave. And Doc, here's why they had to go. To, here's why they changed their transmission. Why it broke? It's crazy. He's had such a bad year that his garage selection this weekend was all the way down towards turn four. The cars exit the track, and the guy in the very last garage area has to make a hard U-turn to get into his garage stall. You can't do it. Junior had to back up, go forward, back up, go forward. People were getting clogged up behind him. He had to hurry. Eventually, using reverse all that much in practice, it wore out. That's why they had to change the transmission. And by NASCAR rules, they had to. Start at the rear. Well, you talk about DEI. I mean, I just got to believe this team is going to be so strong next year with Mark Martin and all the drivers that got driving that car and Truex guys week after week has been so strong in that one car. Let me tell you what, DEI racing is not in trouble at all. Making a lot of horsepower, they'll fix their problems and they'll be just as good as ever. They indeed will be. And how about the guy right behind Earnhardt Jr.? That is Greg Biffle. And they can rename this race the Greg Biffle Invitational. He has won it the last three consecutive years. Here goes Truex. He's going to get another spot. This is going to be for second spot or third spot. Yeah, you take, a look at his car. you take a look at his number one car, Mark Truex, the way it's, the way it's running right now. Does it look like DEI's in trouble to you? <laughs> Not to me. This thing looks great out there. Not at all. And remember now that Mark Martin will share that eight car next year for DEI with U.S. Army cars. On it. He and Eric Almarola will split that car. So uh, they're going to be awfully stout in 2008. I'll tell you what, if he quits, if, if he start, stays running so high and gets in that wall, he's going to be in trouble. I wish he'd get that wall just a little bit of a breathing room, Andy. This last time by, about six inches off the wall. What about our championship teammates and contenders? Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon. They are running fifth and sixth in that order. There's Jimmy Johnson. He has led a lap. So remember, you get those, already gets those five bonus points. Led the very first lap. And uh, behind him, a pretty good sign by sad battle. The 24 car of Gordon trying to hold off Tony Stewart. You know, you know the fastest way around a racetrack, Andy, I mean, uh, the shortest way around, I mean, is dead on the bottom of the racetrack. But it seems to me the fastest way is dead on top of the track. We're watching Martin Truex with all that momentum really flying off a of turn two and really flying off a of turn four. And why Gordon's dead on the bottom right now, I don't well, have a clue. Well, there's some of these guys are making time on the bottom. We saw the, the A-car junior. He usually runs the top and runs it well. I just saw him running the bottom for many, many laps. He's made up a lot of ground. But in uh, 24 car was going forward on the bottom. And it seems like when the tires wear out, the groove, the preferred groove does move all the way to the top of the track. Though. More on Jeff Gordon, Alan Best. Well, here might be a reason why he might be running the bottom, Rusty. Jeff Gordon has reported the front end of his car losing grip under throttle. So that means in the center of the corner, when he gets back to the gas, the front end starts to slide. So he needs more room to exit the corner. And if that front end was ripping properly, maybe he's moved to the bottom to give himself that more room so he doesn't have to get out of the gas, leaving the corner and lose more time than he would otherwise. Well, Alan, that's a good, that's a
that's a good explanation right there. I know if the front end slides and you go at the corner 200 miles an hour and turn the wheel, that thing doesn't turn. You're going to hit the wall. But right now, doing what he's doing, he's about a half a second slower than Martin Truex Jr., who is the fastest car on the track right now. Jeff Gordon needs room to slide and room to race here, trying to get a championship, trying to reel in his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. Back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations.